Welcome to this quick start tutorial for Phoenix FD4 Maya. In this video, we look at creating a gasoline explosion simulation using a fast preset and then rebuild it manually to understand how it works more fully. Take a look at our tap water simulation in our previous quick start video for a little background on the concepts that we continue here. Now we'll start in a blank scene and I'll create a sphere that will be the source of my simulation. I'll set its radius to 24. With the sphere still selected, I'll choose the gasoline explosion preset from the Phoenix FD shelf. This creates the simulation container with the sphere as its source. Now select the start simulation icon. I'll elapse several minutes here to see the sim progress into this fiery explosion and I'll stop the simulation with the shelf icon. As I orbit around the result, we have a nicely detailed explosion which should remind you not to smoke at a gas station. So, we did this pretty easily using the preset, but now let's take a look at setting this up manually to get a deeper look at the workflow. Click the trash icon in the shelf to delete the cache from the scene. Select the simulator and delete it. Also, select the source node and delete that, just leaving the sphere in the scene. In the Phoenix shelf, click on the Create Phoenix FD Fluid Simulator icon and click and drag to create a volume shown here in the pink colored lines. Select the simulator and in the Attribute Editor, open the Grid section and change Units to Meter so our simulation will be a large scale explosion. This means our sphere is 24 meters wide. As we saw with the tap water sim in our previous quick start video, scale is important to an accurate sim. Set the unit's scale to 1 to keep from scaling the sim any further. So our sim is about 190 by 148 by 100 meters, which is pretty sizable. I'll place the sphere a little more centered at the bottom of the container. And now we need a source. Click the Create Fire slash Smoke Source icon in the shelf and place it in the scene like so. Select the sphere and then shift select the source and click Add Selected Objects in the Attribute Editor to add the sphere as an emitter for the explosion. Turn off the Temperature and Smoke options and turn on Fuel. The discharge attribute controls the speed of the discharged fluid, so increasing this value will discharge more fluid into the sim. Since we're creating an explosion, we'll need to discharge a huge amount of fluid over a very short amount of time. So, go to frame 1 in the scene and set discharge to 2200 and set a keyframe. Go to the next frame and keyframe discharge at 0. Select the simulation and in the Attribute Editor, go to the Fuel section and turn on Enable Burning, which is generally what happens when I eat spicy Mexican food. Click the Start Simulation icon and you'll notice that the sim runs quite slowly. I'll stop the sim and back in the Grid section, notice that our total cells count is at over 353 million. Increase the cell size to 1.5 to reduce the overall resolution of the sim to speed it up. This gives us about 840,000 total cells. For more information on this, please see our previous tap water quick start video. Start the simulation and you see the frame rate is more responsive when it plays back in Maya, but nothing is really happening yet. So stop the sim again and expand the fuel settings. The ignition temperature is the temperature at which our fuel ignites and burns. Phoenix FD uses 300 Kelvin as the default temperature in a sim, so if you set a value slightly below 300, such as 290, and then restart the sim, you get an ignition inside the container. Now the explosion is not looking quite right yet. The blast is clipping at the edges of the simulator and the preview quality is a bit ratty. Expand the Preview section and scroll down to the bottom and expand the GPU Shade Preview subsection and then check on Enable. Go back up to the Grid settings and change Adaptive Grid to Temperature slash Liquid. This expands the grid depending on the temperature of the fluid inside 
when it meets the specified threshold. Set the threshold to 800 and start the sim. The grid, as you can see, expands and the explosion is not clipped like before. Stop the sim and go back to the first frame. Set your boundary conditions to a y-axis of jammed negative. This allows the explosion to react to the bottom of the sim container, in other words, the ground. Start the sim again, and I'll elapse about 30 seconds here to see that the sim reacts nicely to the ground, but it looks way too uniform right now. Go ahead and stop your sim and expand the dynamics settings and scroll down to the conservation section. Increasing the quality attribute allows the sim to spread out a bit more and to swirl better. Set that value to 80. The higher this value, the more simulation time is needed, so be careful when going too high. Turn on uniform density to allow the sim to not consider the mass of the fluid, which is good for smoke and explosions. And then I'll reduce the steps per frame to speed up the sim time. Start the sim, and as I elapse about 30 seconds again, you can see that the sim is breaking up a bit, but not quite there yet. So stop the sim, and we need to add a little noise to the simulation. So select the source object, and in the fluid discharge section, increase the noise value to 10. Play the sim, and the explosion's shape is looking better and more broken up. Now, there's a lot of smoke in the result. In the fuel settings, reduce the smoke amount to 0.4 to allow for more burning for a brighter fire and increase the smoke threshold to 1.0, which will lessen how much of the fuel is created as smoke. Lower the propagation value to 2 to reduce how fast it propagates throughout the sim. Play the simulation and we're getting better results, but it's too explosive right now, too hot. So we'll need to reduce the energy to 5 and the fuel depletion to 0.8 to reduce how fast the fuel is burned up. I'll stop and restart the sim and I'll elapse about 90 seconds here to show that the result is looking much more like a large explosion. I'll stop the sim to take a closer look at the result. Now we need a higher resolution for a better result. In the grid section, Set the cell size to 0.75 and resim the explosion to see the result. I'll elapse a little over 4 minutes of sim time here to get to this result, which is definitely looking nicer. Now let's focus more on the look itself. Expand rendering and then expand the fire subsection. Notice there are three options for the fire opacity mode that will control part of the look. Choose Use Own Opacity and the View Panel Updates. The graph here controls just the opacity of the fire. Click to add a new point to the curve and drag it down to reduce the opacity of the fire, revealing more of the internal fire making it look brighter. Drag it up to increase the opacity to hide more of the internal structure. Lower this middle point for a gentle curve down like this. Click the Expand button to get a larger graph with which to work. Now set a few new points and create a look like this wave I'm making here to create more visual interest to the explosion. This, however, thinned out our smoke. So expand the smoke opacity settings and set the simple smoke opacity value to 0.9 to give us thicker smoke in these areas of the sim. Expand the smoke color settings and set a darker gray to get a deeper, darker smoke. Reduce the external scatter multiplier to 0.5 so that the light inside the smoke scatters less and you should notice a slight darkening of the smoke. See here in the sim, the fire is really bright. In the fire settings, set the opacity multiplier to 0.3 and the fire gets even brighter. But if you back down on the physically based value, the fire gets a good deal more red and orange added to it. The slider balances between how much of the fire intensity comes from the color gradient plus the fire multiplier versus how much is calculated using the physically based black body shader. Increasing the fire multiplier to 5.0 gets you more fire inside the explosion. You can select the color of that fire by sliding this arrow and double clicking it allows you to select a color like this green I'll pick. 
just go ahead and undo that action and we're back to the red from before. What I really want to do here in these areas is to cool off the explosion faster. Go up and expand the dynamic settings and increase the cooling value to 0.3 and we'll get the fire to cool faster in the sim. Head to the grid settings and lower resolution of the sim by increasing the cell size to 1.5 to speed up the simulation. Restart the sim. I'll elapse about 90 seconds of sim time here and I'll stop the explosion here. Let's go ahead and render our result. Enable V-Ray in render settings and then render a frame. Here in the renderer we can see that we have my default lights turned on in the scene. So go to the overrides tab and under the lighting heading turn off default lights. These will just add light to the scene that we don't want. Render again and you'll see that our smoke is lit by the fire itself. Now let's make a ground plane. Go to the create menu and select V-Ray create V-Ray plane for our ground. I'll move it down just a little bit. Click render again and we have a ground that is lit by the explosion itself. It's really quite bright. Select the simulator and in the rendering settings expand fire lights subsection. Reduce the light power on scene value to 0.4 and you can reduce the lighting cast into the scene from that fire. Render a frame and you'll notice that the ground plane is not lit as brightly as before. Go to the grid section and set the cell size back down to 0.75 to increase the overall sim resolution and then go ahead and restart the sim. Now I'm going to elapse about 10 minutes of time here as we watch this explosion resolve with a much higher quality. Now let's take a look at using this in a practical scenario. Open the scene file barrelsstart.ma and you'll see three metal barrels in the scene lit by a sunlight and a rendering camera called camera one. Select the first barrel and then select the gasoline explosion preset in the shelf. Change your cell size to three for a faster simulation speed. Start the sim and our barrel explodes. So let's get the other barrels to explode as well. Stop the sim and take a look in the perspective view. Select the source and press Ctrl D to duplicate the source and move it over a little bit like this. Select the second barrel. Shift select the duplicated source and click add selected objects to this new source. Now if I start the sim both the barrels start explosions at exactly the same time. What I want to do is offset the barrel as if the first sets off the second. Select the second source and set the discharge to zero and at frame five set a keyframe for it. Then at frame six set discharge to 3000 and keyframe that. Then at frame seven key the discharge back to zero again. Play the sim and you can see that the first explosion clearly sets off the second one. Now like any good pyromaniac let's add more fuel to the fire with the third barrel. Stop your sim. Duplicate the second source with Ctrl D and go to frame one. Select the third barrel and shift select the third source and click add selected objects. Now notice that the discharge for the third source is already set at zero and that's because we duplicated. Keyframes don't transfer over with a simple duplicate in Maya. Go to frame 40 and key the discharge for the third source at zero. At frame 41, key it at 3000 and then at frame 42, set discharge back to zero and key that. Start the sim. I'll elapse just over two and a half minutes and as you can see, as the first two explosions begin to cool off, there is a third explosion that heats things back up again. I'll elapse another three and a half minutes to get to this result and then I'll stop the sim and take a look around. Scrub the timeline to really see all three distinct explosions inside this simulation. Render a frame and it looks pretty cool. So let's get a higher detail. Select the simulation and set the cell size to 1.5 and restart the simulation for a more detailed sim. I'll elapse about seven minutes of time to see this final result. My sim here, 
I get a lovely simulation and a safe way to blow up three barrels full of gasoline without burning off my eyebrows. Thank you for joining us for this quick start video on the gasoline explosion simulation using Phoenix FD for Maya.